When five young men decide to form a pop group, they don't usually set up house in a remote cottage in the wilds of Norfolk together with all their girlfriends. But the Global Village Trucking Company aren't an ordinary pop group. They're not very worried about making money and they won't take any of the usual shortcuts to success. What they are determined to do is to make their own way without what they regard as the moguls of the record business, the promoters, the big managers, the professional manipulators. Global Village want to do it their way. Well, we're a rock and roll band with a difference. The difference being the fact that, that we live as a community of about 15 people, all of whom in their own ways contribute to the music which comes out, even though the final product is just five musicians on stage. Our whole household is a self-contained working unit, which includes all the people who help get the show on the road, like the roadies, the managers, and then all the people behind the scenes, like back at the house doing the domestic things. And it's all like a sort of great big family and a working team all in one, all pushing towards this end product of getting the music out. Well, we've decided it's a lot easier to be out in the country, which is why we're living out in Norfolk. It creates a much more harmonic feel, both within ourselves and with our environment. Like people always think in terms of the country as a place to, to go away to and do nothing. And it doesn't actually work like that with us at all because within this small space under this roof, there's incredible energy going on. There's incredible determinism to do something which we all believe in. And um, it gets very hectic at times, like tempers get frayed and people say very heavy things to one another. But basically, it's, it's, it's great. Everyone in Global Village has their own responsibility to the group. Helga's in charge of the washing. The idea is that all should work and play together in peace and harmony. Don't tread too heavily on that bit going, of metal, Johnny, because you'll go right through. Hey, Jimmy, do you know where the hole was? Well, oh, look up, you can see the sky. It's all right, I can see it, yeah. Predictably, the women do most of the housework, while the men are expected to keep the place from falling apart. There's nothing revolutionary about the division of labour. Yeah, but I can't remember which bit it was. That's all right, George. Can't you see it? There's a hole. You can see the sky through it. If I cover up the hole, you will no longer be able to see it. Got it? Logic, right? Yeah, I can no longer see the sky. Great! How much do the men help in the business of actually running the house? Well, we, uh, we have a rotation and they're all supposed to do the separate jobs, the easy jobs, like cleaning the bathroom, which James helps Daniela do. Johnny's supposed to do the stairs and we all have turns washing up every day and we're supposed to keep the kitchen together on that day, do all the sweeping things. They don't, they do help a lot around the house, like, they, Johnny mends the roof and he does the electricity. If we didn't have him, he did all the wiring in this house, which we'd have been lost without. The group find great strength in self-reliance, not just emotionally, but right down to the most simple domestic tasks, like making their own bread. Even if we don't have anything else, we got each other, you know, and that's important. We're all ordinary human beings, really. Um, and a lot of people have this idea that People live in communes, they're, they're wild, degenerate hippies, you know, and they think, <coughs> I think, they think they're not quite like human beings, you know. The sort of stock image of the, of the commune, the one that we're all familiar with, is uh, this sort of scene of depravity and everybody sleeping with everybody else and sort of thing. I mean, how in fact does it work out? Well, we, I mean, all the, all the chicks here are, are faithful and all that. I mean, you know, we all sort of, all the chicks never sleep with anyone else as far as I know. Well, I don't, anyway. And, um... All the, all the unattached ones usually have chicks home from gigs or something. Not, not very often, though. Friends, you know, you know, they're, they're usually not... friends. They're, I mean, they're not, sort of, they're not sort of sordid or anything like that. They're really good friends who they happen to dig each other a lot. Vicky, do you think, as a mother with a child, that living with this community adds something there? Oh, yes, yeah. Because, because well, we've got brothers and sisters. And, and he's got mothers and fathers, besides myself. And, and as he hasn't got an established father, he's, he's can learn so much more from several just different fathers and mothers. It'd be nice. And we all love him just mm. the same, yeah. you know? I mean, I, I really love him. 
I mean, it's not my my baby, really. I mean, not by sort of medical terms, but I mean, I feel just as much, well, not as much as a mother as Vicky does, but and I feel very maternal towards him, you know, because he's, he's, a, he's a child in our community. Most of the members of Global Village aren't much given to deep philosophizing about their way of life. But they probably all believe that they're reaching back to a feeling for the vital relationship between man and nature, a feeling which they believe is growing in the world. 